Hello and welcome to my unboxing and a brief review of the Daypon Teak Buffet Car. Uh, comes in a pretty standard Daypon fare really, the solid plastic packaging, uh, much similar to their Locos. So slide that off and pop the top open. The first thing I noticed with this particular carriage when I unboxed it was that it's actually pretty hard to get at. It's um, got quite stumpy fingers and it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of work. However, I did then discover that the whole thing lifts out. Like so. And it can just pop the carriage out. Hopefully without breaking it. Looking at what is actually contained in the package is the bag of Daypon's new, I believe these are the magnetic couplers. Uh, I don't use these at all. I'm still on the good old Rapido coupler due to mainly compatibility reasons. The actual carriage cost me around about £18 um, from a well-known Liverpool retailer. I only bought one of these carriages so far because I actually wanted to test out a particular feature they will have and that is the light bar. That was an additional six or seven pounds I believe it's quite effective, it works on both DCC and DC and gives quite a nice orange glow. I'll just move that out of the way and knock everything over. I'll bring back the carriage. The actual detail levels on the carriage are very very good uh, quite expensive really for the kind of stock I normally tend to buy which is the Storm Farish Mark 1's I believe I've been buying mostly can't go wrong with the Mark 1 the teak detail is actually superb it's much much better than my old double O gauge Teaks from the Flying Scotsman set. Now if I can just pop open this roof and also drop the roof. There we are. Simple clip in affair. Nothing special. Straightforward. There is a reason for that groove which I'll go into in a moment. I'm looking inside the carriage you can see the, the kitchen area, the bar, and also the seating arrangements. And this socket. This socket is for the connection of the light bar. So if I just stick that in there. One way or another it will go in. So it was quite tricky the first time I did it as well. Ah, there we are. So the light bar just plugs straight into the carriage. It's all pre-wired. Uh, I look just underneath. You can see there is in fact the wipers. So we can get that into focus. I don't think that's going to want to bother today. There's wipers on. All the bogey wheels for the pickups. Like I said before, you don't need to worry about whether you're on DC or DCC. It, it will work and there's no additional work required unless you want the lights themselves to operate individually from the power supply. I'm going to attempt on the camera to get this 
Right, as it actually took me a fair few tries to get it in the first time. And there is a particular way round the roof goes when you go to reinstall it. With the close together group here at the bar end. Now we'll just make sure that is slotted just nicely into the groove. I'll clip that in place. Nope, let's try again. Clip that in place. Now we'll pre-warn you to be careful with the detail hanging off at the ends when you're doing this. It's very, very easy to catch them up and such a carriage you it almost certainly spoil it um right there we are nope the wire is caught this is the thing I had I struggled with the first time as well is keeping the wire inside the carriage and not letting it I could do with an extra pair of hands in fact that'd be quite handy okay nearly there bear with me a moment Probably the best way of doing it. Line up one side, just give it a bit of a tug and a push, and there we are. We have one buffet car with the light bar installed. Now, I'm just going to jump cut for a second, and I'm back. Now, I've zoomed in a little bit just to see. Well, I'll turn the power on. That's at roughly 12 volts, which is the same kind of brightness you get with it on DC. See? Now, um, I don't think I've actually got much else to say about this uh, carriage, really. Other than. Uh, nearly knocking over my power supply in the process right nothing else to say really uh, great detail fantastic close coupling on the ends and when paired up with an A3 like so there we are pretty much got it It looks fantastic. I will be buying more of these. Uh, I will, on my shopping list, I have them. The at least one first class, kind of open thirds and the brake, perhaps a second brake, depending on. As you can see, my layout is quite small, so I'm limited to the length of train I can make. Bring that back out. You can see papyrus, which I've previously reviewed, viewed in my other videos. Uh, it, with that, I, it's actually quite a short review, which I did with a completely different technique, where I filmed everything and cut it all together, then did the voiceover. However, I tend to find that I actually prefer doing them like this, as it feels a bit more natural, and I can do this with my hands. There's another thing I want to address uh, with regards to my video reviews. I have received uh, some criticism with regards to how I my speech. Now it's something I am working on. The, the stutters and the stalls are something that if I work on develop my own techniques they will slowly start to disappear in time. I'm trying to stop saying um 
However, they, they do tend to slip out when I'm doing these and to go back in and cut it all out or to mute them, it would just be a bit, it'd be a lot of work, especially as I do these mainly on the fly. Well, thank you very much for watching and I hope I can keep some viewers on for further reviews. I think next it might have to be a tour of the layout. I'll, I'll see what I can come up with. Okay.